Welcome to our journey back in time to the colorful and dynamic decade of the 1970s. A time of change, not just in fashion and music, but in the very way people shop for their daily needs. Today, we are stepping into the aisles of history to explore grocery shopping in the 1970s. So grab your shopping list and let's take a walk down memory lane. The 1970s were a turning point for supermarkets. As we step into this lively scene, let's take a moment to absorb the atmosphere that defined a typical grocery shopping experience during this dynamic decade. Supermarkets were expanding both in size and the variety of products offered, laying the ground for the mega stores that are familiar to us today. Yet these spaces had a distinct 1970s flair that made shopping a unique experience. The architecture of supermarkets Supermarkets began to reflect the era's optimism and forward-thinking attitude. Bold geometric shapes and bright signage invited customers inside where they were greeted by an array of goods that was unprecedented for the time. These stores were not just places to buy food, they were designed to be shopping destinations. Inside, the wide aisles were stocked with an ever-growing array of products, from the fresh produce section brimming with fruits and vegetables, to aisles dedicated to international cuisines. Shoppers were introduced to a world of flavors previously unheard of in the grocery sector. This was an era where the concept of the supermarket truly came into its own, Offering not just groceries, but household goods, beauty products, and more under one roof. I feel like I would have a lot of fun going to a 1970s grocery store. Product packaging was an art form in itself, featuring bright colors, bold fonts, and designs that captured the spirit of the times. These packages promised not just quality and value, but also a sense of excitement and innovation. Marketing campaigns became more sophisticated, with television commercials and in-store promotions becoming a staple of the shopping experience, aiming to entice and entertain shoppers. The supermarket was a community hub, a place where families came together to do their weekly shopping. It was not uncommon to see children marveling at the latest cereal box characters or parents comparing notes on new products. The staff played a crucial role in the experience, offering a friendly smile and helpful advice, contributing to the sense of community and personal touch that made each visit memorable. The checkout area was the final stop in the supermarket journey, where mechanical cash registers tallied up purchases and shoppers checked chatted about their finds of the day. Even as technology began to change the retail landscape, the essence of grocery shopping in the 1970s marked by discovery, community, and a touch of whimsy. Nowadays, it's just all self-checkouts. I don't know, just nothing's the same. Um, I wasn't alive in the 70s, but I can imagine it being a different and fun experience going grocery shopping back then. Now let's dive into the heart of the 1970s, a decade that revolutionized the consumer landscape with an explosion of new products and brands. This was a time when the supermarket shelves began to resemble a kaleidoscope of choices, reflecting a society that was rapidly embracing the convenience and diversity that these products offered. As the fabric of society shifted, with more families becoming dual-income households, the demand for convenience and meal preparation soared. The 1970s responded with innovation in food production and preservation, heralding the golden age of prepackaged and frozen foods. These products promised to make mealtimes easier, faster, and more varied catering to the busy lifestyles of modern families. Step into the world of 1970s product packaging, a visual feast of bright colors, bold fonts, and eye-catching graphics. This was not merely packaging, it was a canvas for creativity and a reflection of the, of the era's optimism and exuberance. Brands were not just selling products, they were also selling a lifestyle and an idea. Through memorable mascots, catchy jingles, and innovative advertising campaigns, they created an emotional connection with their audience turning everyday items into icons of popular culture. And it's true, I just love those vintage jingles. Um, let me know in the comments below if you know any like famous food jingles from the 1970s. Marketing geniuses of the 1970s knew the power of a memorable mascot or catchy jingle. They became masters of capturing the public's imagination, making their products stand out in a crowded market. From Tony the Tiger, to the unforgettable jingles that still echo in our minds. These marketing strategies turned brands into household names, many of which continue to dominate the market today. And the 1970s were the golden era for breakfast cereals, many of which are still popular today. And here's a list of some of the most popular cereals from the decade. And I was really starting to crave cereal once I started doing all this research, because when I was a kid, I used to love eating cereal. And the first one is Kellogg's Fruit Loops. And these ones were introduced in the 60s. 
Fruit Loops continued to gain popularity through the 70s with the colorful fruit flavored rings and also the iconic Toucan Sam as a mascot. And then there's Quaker Oats Captain Crunch. I really love this one. Another cereal that originated in the 60s but became a breakfast staple in the 70s. I even ate these in the 90s. And Captain Crunch is beloved for its sweet crunchy squares and its sea captain mascot. And then there's the classic Cheerios. And this was already a classic by the 70s and Cheerios maintained its popularity as a healthy, simple breakfast option for families and now we have frosted flakes and with that catchy jingle the tiger saying they're great and the slogan of frosted flakes and the mascot tony the tiger became a favorite for kids and adults in the 70s and then we have lucky charms and it has the marshmallow bits and shapes like hearts stars and horseshoes and this was a 1970s cereal and then we have post honeycomb and this one unique honeycomb shape sweet taste and this was a hit in the 70s and then there's the classic rice krispies with the snap crackle and pop sound and this was again another favorite then we have cocoa puffs and these were popular for their chocolatey flavor i really like these ones because the milk churned chocolate and then there's the beloved count chocula and frankenberry and these ones were introduced in the early 70s for their monster themed cereals i used to eat count chocula when i as a kid it's definitely very sweet but again it's fun and then there's tricks and then the silly rabbit tricks or forgets commercial and these are fun fruity colorful balls and i definitely again remember that slogan and let me know in the comments below what your favorite breakfast cereal is that maybe you had when you were a kid or stuff that you eat now and then we have popular drinks in the 70s so in the 1970s the grocery store beverage aisle was a showcase of popular drinks that reflected the era's tastes and trends so here are some popular popular drinks from the 70s and the first one is Tab. This was Coca-Cola's first diet soda introduced in the 1960s but remained very popular in the 70s and is marketed as a health conscious product and a low calorie sugar alternative. And I think I remember this one uh, in Mad Men they're talking about it. And then we have Tang and this one was first marketed in the late 1960s. Tang became especially popular in the 70s in part due to its association with the US space program. I think they brought it to space and there was like a drink there and it has vitamin c in it i believe and it's orange flavored i think it's definitely very sweet um you can still buy that one today and there's fresca this is another diet soda from coca-cola and it has a nice great fruit flavor it's carbonated and again it's another refreshing a low calorie and then there's dr pepper and this one's not quite cola it's not quite root beer and it definitely carved out a niche in the soda market in the 70s and then we have high c and this is a fruit flavored drink which was popular among kids. It has a very sweet taste. It kind of reminds me of like a Kool-Aid in a way. And then there's Hawaiian Punch. And this one was actually developed in the 1930s, but became very popular in the 70s for its fruity flavor and red color. I never really drank that when I was a kid. Um, maybe it wasn't as popular in Canada. Let me know in the comments below if you drank Hawaiian Punch. I'm curious. And now we're diving into popular desserts from the 70s. And in the 1970s, the grocery store shelves were filled with a variety of desserts that became popular household treats and this era saw a mix of convenience and indulgent reflecting the decades broader culinary and cultural trends and here's a look at some of the most popular desserts so jello was still very popular in the 70s and was already a staple from previous decades and there was a wide variety of flavors in the 70s and people made those big giant jello salads and molds which became a quirky and colorful dessert or a side dish for many families when I was a kid I definitely ate jello I feel like it's just not that popular anymore. And then there's the instant pudding mixes, and these were noted done by the brands like Jell-O. Um, it was a quick and convenient dessert. You could make chocolate, vanilla, butterscotch, and I remember making these as well. And then there's Hostess Twinkies, which were very popular in the 70s. Um, you can still buy these ones today. I found them. I don't know. They're a bit much. They're kind of sweet. And then there's Sara Lee frozen cakes. I've never had one of these, but I'm really curious about it. And they became a classic. There's an all butter pound cake. And these are go-to dessert for entertaining families. And then there's pet Ritz pies. And these are frozen pies that could be baked at home. And so you can make a homemade dessert experience at the store. And then they had cherry pies as well. And apple. That sounds interesting. I don't know if they have those in Canada. And there's the classic Betty Crocker cake mixes, which I love. 
love. My favorite is cherry chip, and these were very popular in the 70s. And there's lots of different flavors. There's also devil foods, yellow cake, and angel food. And then there's Cool Whip, and this one was introduced in the late 60s. And this became a staple for toppings on pies, jello, and other desserts. And I feel like this one became popular because I think for a while everyone thought fat was really bad for you, so they wanted to do low fat. So Cool Whip was an alternative to that. I haven't had it in ages, but I do remember in the 90s, Cool Whip was very popular. I'm curious what it tastes like now. I feel like it's probably kind of sweet. And then there's Pop Tarts, and these were associated with breakfast, but they're also a dessert because they have their sweet filling and frosting in them. And these ones were introduced in the 60s, but they became very popular in the 70s with new flavors. And I remember having them when I was a kid. It was definitely a novelty. I like the ones with the pink icing. And then a lot of foods were actually invented in the 1970s, and I would like to find out which ones there were. So the microwave, this became very popular in the 70s. It was invented earlier, but it wasn't widely available to households until the 1970s and this revolutionized cooking making it faster and more convenient to heat up prepared meals so this probably helped with all the frozen fast foods and TV dinners and then there's hamburger helper and this one was introduced by General Mills in 1971 and this was a quick and easy meal solution that required just a few simple ingredients and it became a staple to many Americans and I definitely remember this in the 80s and 90s as well and Eggo waffles were technically invented in the late 50s but they were super popular in the 70s and they're frozen waffles you just put in the toaster and there's always that slogan I remember when I was a kid it's like Lego my ego and that's still in my head and then cup of noodles and this was invented up by Nissan Foods in 1971 and they're the first instant noodle packaged in waterproof styrofoam cup I mean those are kind of good I don't think they can be good for you but I really sometimes you know when you're just kind of craving one of those instant noodles and this one surprised me Starbucks coffee was founded in 1971 and it revolutionized coffee culture in the United States. Although it began as a retailer of whole bean and ground coffee, tea and spices, it eventually led to the popularization of espresso-based drinks and the coffee house as a social gathering place. Because in my head, I always thought Starbucks was founded in the 90s, but I didn't realize it was that early on. And then we have a Ben and Jerry's ice cream, and this one was founded in 1978 in Vermont by Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield. And Ben and Jerry's brought innovation and quirky ice cream flavors to the market, along with a focus on high quality ingredients and social activism. And stove top stuffing was introduced in 1972, and it was a convenient and quick way to prepare stuffing outside of a turkey, making it a popular side dish for Thanksgiving and beyond. And Lean Cuisine, which was launched in 1973, and is one of the first brands to focus on lower calorie frozen meals, catering to the growing interest in diet and health conscious eating. The 1970s were a pivotal decade for grocery shopping, setting the stage for many of the conveniences and choices we enjoy today. From the introduction of new technologies to the evolution of consumer culture, shopping for groceries has come a long way since those vibrant days. And let me know in the comments below, do you have any favorite foods from the 70s that you miss? And let me know if you want me to do any other decades in the 20th century and talk about the different foods that were popular then. All right, don't forget to check out some of my other videos.